Welcome to another module. Now you've got your first job as a product owner or Scrum Master, but where to start? Imagine the following situation. There is an open position for the product owner because the previous one left the company. So you have your certificate ready, you have applied for this position, you are selected. So what do you think? How to start? Now please pause this video and think about it for a couple of seconds. And you can be in two different situations that you consider. You will work on existing product or you will build a new product from scratch. The new company has new rules. This job is your first role as a product owner. New products, new business processes, new people, and a lot of unknown things. Only the salary is known in some extent. So there are a few things you need to be aware of before you start working on your new role. First, it's a problem focus. So who are your users? What's on their A list? What general problems you're solving for them? That's very important. Members and roles. It is essential just to have a note on who is doing what on the team. Who is the product owner? Who is the scrum master or agile coach, etc. So everyone understands. Method or parameters. If you are using one week sprint, for example, or two week sprint, that's a good idea. Something you want just to write down and make transparent. Systems. What system do you use for what? We put story cards on Trello, for example. We do this here. We do that there. You have a specific point of view about that. The Agile Manifesto says that individual interactions are more important than processes and tools. And that's certainly important. But any new software development team, like Scrum team, is going to have some tools and some methods they use. So just be explicit about these. Conventions and practices. So what convention and practices for whatever it is you do, code reviews, testing, things like that, those are good to separate, especially as you learn more about them. And finally, we have log. It's a good idea to keep notes about your Scrum retrospectives so that on ongoing basis you are able to keep an eye on what decisions you are making about how to get better and how you are improved over time. Okay, so you just started as a product owner. What should be your first step? So the first step would be form the Scrum team and collaborate with them. As a Scrum product owner, you only need one thing to get started, which is your Scrum team. You will need something to help you guide the process, coach you and your team and to solve impediments, which is your Scrum master. And of course, you'll need some people to develop and maintain the product. That's your developers. Your first step as a product owner should be to get yourself a Scrum team. In all following steps, make sure you collaborate with them to increase your chances for success, but also to get the team enthusiastic, motivated and involved and to use their knowledge and experiences. Step 2. Get clarity on the product vision. Ideally, you would be the person who defines the product vision. But what I see typically is that the starting product owners are appointed in their role by the organization and typically do not have the mandate to dictate on the product vision yet. So therefore, you should get the clarity on the product vision by talking to your stakeholders and your scrum team. That is why I need you to back to the lecture product vision, product strategy and product roadmap again it would require a perfect and non-changing world to get your first vision board right. Besides that, since the world is changing continuously, you'll need probably to have a pivot or change things around over time anyway. So don't try to get it perfect. Try to create an inspiring vision, which helps people to focus. That's an important part of your job as a product owner, to create focus. 
Step three, get clarity on your stakeholders and how to engage them. One of your responsibility as a product owner is to engage with your stakeholders, including customers. You should make sure that the right people are sitting together with you as a product owner to decide on the product vision, product roadmap and value for the product and to make choices together. As a product owner, you should involve the right stakeholders to maximize the value delivered to your customers. That is why I need you to go back to the lecture regarding stakeholders. You would likely spend most of your time on your most important stakeholders, so design your communication strategy based on these principles. Step number four, get clarity on your mandate, including your team and budget. So now that you know your most important stakeholders, involve them to define your mandate. Maybe you been appointed by sponsor, management or the business as a product owner. But what does it mean for them? What are your responsibilities and what is the mandate that comes with these responsibilities? And you can use tools that will help you decide who does what. One of these tools is delegation poker and delegation board that can be found at this address. So. Use delegation poker to clarify who is responsible for what and to what level. This is a method where you can encourage employee engagement through controlled self-organization and clarified value and decision making. Step number five, determine what value means for your product. How to define and measure value is context dependent. This may be different depending on your product, type of product, product life cycle phase, etc. And therefore you should define together with your most important stakeholders what you con consider as value. What is valuable for the product? What is valuable for your customers? What is valuable for the process you are supporting? Based on how you define value for your product, you can also decide how you will measure value for the product. And please remember, what value is for your product is context dependent. However, what value is is also time dependent. What value is for your product and how to measure it may change over time. Step number six, create a goal-oriented product roadmap. Now that you define what value is for your product and how to measure value, it's good time to translate this into goal-oriented product roadmap. The goal-oriented roadmap is very appreciated since it focuses on value or goals first and features later. A lot of product owners fall into trap of maximizing the team's output. So your goal should, however, be to maximize the outcome so to start by focusing on goals first, define a couple of goals for the shorter term, next sprint, this month or next month, and the longer term, this quarter, next quarter and this year. Ordering and managing your product backlog will become much easier if you are clear on your goals. Step number seven, create a story map for your product. So the next step would be to create a story map together with some of your stakeholders and developers. The story mapping technique is an awesome way for brainstorm, gain insights and to get the picture of the product you are creating. This is why you need to go back to the lecture where we talk about user story mapping. Step number eight, co-create the sprint goal and the sprint plan. Now that you have created your roadmap and story map, it is time to design a sprint goal. The sprint goal is very helpful because it provides the scrum teams with a lot of more focus. Focus is not only one of core values of the scrum framework. It also makes a huge difference for the performance of the developers and the amount of business and customers value you can deliver for your product. One of the good practices that I want to introduce to, to you is the concept of sprint goal. So before the sprint planning, you as a product owner creates a concept of the sprint goal with your scrum master by brainstorming together. The reason I'm calling it is it's a con concept is because the sprint goal is being created during the sprint planning together with the whole scrum team. 
Now, perhaps you might want to consider starting the sprint planning with the goal in mind to reshape the goal with the developers and then to move to the other aspects of the sprint planning meeting. And step number nine, keep collaborating with your Scrum team and stakeholders. While sprinting and while regular delivering done product increments, the most important thing for you to do is as a product owner is to keep collaborating with your Scrum team and your stakeholders. Support the developers by hosting refinement session, explaining the product vision, goals, roadmap and product backlog items. Support them by making items small, clear and valuable. Support them in gathering feedback from customers and users, etc. Also keep collaborating with your stakeholders. Make sure to spend the most amount of time on your most important stakeholders. Update your stakeholders map once in a while. And the most important, make sure you get feedback early and often so that you can maximize the value delivered every sprint again and again. 